With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Ever witness someone so fast on track you doubt you could ever be on their level? The mission of Advanced Motorsports is to demonstrate the speed is achievable for everyone. With the expertise of some of the best sim drivers in North America, we are set to release free content on social media and comprehensive guides on our website. For those seeking the ultimate experience, our Advanced Motorsport Institute and personalized coaching sessions are the way to go. No matter your level of experience, we invite you to follow us on our social media to learn to be fast, fast. Tonight, the PRL gets a little bit madness filled. Tonight, it's the PRL's turn to get itself a chance to race at a paperclip. Justin Prince, Derek Watson with you as the PRL and its truck series kicks things out tonight for Oval Wednesday Racing. And tonight, the half mile mayhem is on the docket, Derek. Cautions galore, incidents galore, pressure galore is on. 
Well, you know, JP, it's ironic that this track is known for selling the hot dogs, because I think by the end of tonight, there will be plenty of beef to go around here. Welcome, everyone, to Martinsville. As Justin said, a very short track here, part of the schedule for the truck series. And Justin, I think you're right. Lots of beating, lots of banging is on the menu. Here's a quick look at the schedule. Of course, this is just the second race of the season before we go mile and a half racing, the majority of the way of the nine race schedule. Martinsville, the biggest challenge potentially for many, a potential drop for others outside of maybe Dover, if not North Wilkesboro amongst the short tracks on the calendar. For those who missed the opening race of the season, it was a banner to start things off with Patrick Calgill picking up the win. He also picked up the pole that night, Brennan Chatley, Mike Richter, Zach Panzarell, Austin Hunter, all finished with solid runs for those drivers to the top five. Phil Beaver did get a top five and in turn tied with Austin Hunter. The teams in turn, how do they prepare to start things off for the season? They look like this. What about Racing Speedworks, 92 points. They're very strong over Phil Marr. What about Racing Hunters amongst your top three in the team standings entering today? The drivers are just a few moments away from the starting grid. So I can take time to remind you tonight's action brought to you in part by Advanced Sim Racing, owned and operated by Passionate Sim Racers. Advanced Sim Racing designs and builds the sturdiest and most durable aluminum profile racing simulation cockpits available in the market today. All PRO members also get a 5% discount on ASR products using the Precision 5 coupon code. Brace box out for Smith and high end button boxes for sim racing enthusiasts. For the casual gamer, up to the most meticulous sim racing driver. Priced and carefully handcrafted, our button boxes are an enjoyable addition to any sim racing setup. It's at raceboxsimracing.com and get a 5% discount. Use the Precision 5 coupon code. Fuck your products, add incredible margin and realism to every game. If you're being new once, enjoy, put yourself in the driver's seat. Moranis is a performance lifestyle brand motivated by motorsport and founded by professional race car driver Daniel Moran. For more information, visit Moranis.com. Mr. Hedge High Racing Photography. Capture your finest, proudest, or simply worst moments from your hobby in up to 8K resolution. A great addition to any sim room. And Advanced Motorsports. Get ready to learn to be fast. Fast. With Advanced Motorsports, follow them on their socials to become a better driver. Last moments coming over from Race Control. Let's see who is fast, very fast in qualifying. Stephen Kirby. This time out, your pole sitter, RBM Shake, starts off with the pole alongside Brett Adams. Road two, it's Patrick Calgill coming off the win last time alongside Andrew Sharp. Sharp did a two stopper at a one stop racetrack. We'll see what happens this time. Graham Wildman, another good qualifying run to start. He'll start alongside Zach Panzarilla. Then it's Austin Hunter and Jake Mackey. The next row, Matthew Vodka alongside and Nicholas Hunter to round you at your top 10. Marty Calvert will start 11th alongside Stacey Hunter's 71 truck. Phil Beaver, his goal is the top five. He'll start 13th though to start. Alongside him is Tanner Johnson. Will Jennings will start in the Mythic Metals machine alongside Dylan Smith. Then it's Tom Amasi alongside Zachary Williams in the Cheerios machine. Mike Toomer Jr. had a rough one at times last time. He starts 19th alongside Jordan Miller. Then it's Mike Richter coming off a career run for Winneback. He'll start alongside Kyle Dewey. Edward Peltz, he's in an RBM truck from 23rd alongside Zachary Austin. Garrett Austin, he starts 25th alongside Brennan Chatley, way deep in the field for the 59. Last driver on time, Ryan Newman and Luke Davis. Rest of the field, Evan Williams, Antonio Bannister. So one newcomer for the start of tonight's action. The rest of the field looking to try and build upon momentum here. Derek, your keys to win has worked one degree. Oh, I think a lot of it's going to be about controlling the throttle. You can get on the throttle too soon out of the corner. You can spin this truck around and also, of course, avoiding the wrecks. They're inevitable here. And unfortunately, they're probably going to happen. So if you can be out of the way of those wrecks, you can get up a lot of track position just by not being part of the caution, Justin. So everyone's just about ready to go here. Stephen Kirby in control on the inside. Brett Adams. Sam a racing machine on the outside group. Getting quite happy with us through a race spot for coverage on the Pirelli Truck Series. 40 minutes up on the clock. How many go green? How many cautions? 124 laps if it goes green. Green flag is out. We're underway for the paper clip. And 
trouble. Turn two. Brent Adams gets loose on the outside. More trouble at the back. Still no caution, but everybody already getting to the first straight. Getting loose. Kyle Dewey was the other driver. We stay green. Wow, that hit to the wall was very, very hard there in the back of the field, but we stay green. As you said, Justin, very impressive. Everyone avoided both those incidents here. And Stephen Kirby still up in the lead by three tenths of a second here. Look at him, too wide around Martinsville. You can use the outside at times to squeeze down and force the driver below to check up and hold on. But it is a track where we've already seen throughout the week, especially in the fixed races, that being a fixed setup with same setup, we're getting too hot on the tires or taking too much speed on the cold tires. Oh, no. Could be trouble. Speaking of which, bumper cars, Chatley involved. At least one other spun around in Evan Williams. We're under caution. Well, there it was. That was a big one. That's Tom Amassi there trying to get it turned around before the pace car gets there. Needs to back it up more. Gillis finally got it turned around here just before the pace car to keep himself on the lead lap. But when they came in camera shot, Justin, that guy, he was this flying through the screen so i'm not sure if he got some help from someone behind him or he missed a breaking point but so apparently a couple replays here this is the reason chatley was in the mind he was the one who upped up williams at the back and then they stacked up even bigger up the road with the massey and company now that's a six car so that's unrelated we'll see the massey one in a moment but that's the uh, accordion effect you know effectively what happens here jp one person spins out and everyone gets nervous and starts to kind of check it up and swing it wide. So we'll wait and see if we can find the Amassi wreck on the race spot replay machine here. But now that the first caution's out, everyone's going to get a little nervous, JP, because now you think, what if we don't go green for a while and you want to get aggressive with your passes? So a lot to think about. Expecting five laps per caution on average for the pace laps here tonight. Miller losing laps. Man, we're getting really shuffled from all this. Oh, that's what happens with Massey. He thought he cleared the wreck, and then that car kind of came darting down and clipped his back bumper. So he thought he had cleared the wreck. Lots of contact, though, very early there at Martinsville. Well, it is Martinsville Speedway on iRacing. Contact usually is a formality here. It's about how you control that contact the right way, the bump and run the chrome horn in the case of jordan miller he did not use contact to his advantage no that's who got loose and hit a massive he was in contact with the five truck which is uh, zachary william they were playing i i, I don't know it's, it's virginia so i guess we're doing what football here and not hockey <laughs> well there is the saying where there's smart ways to use the bump or to use the door. There's wrong ways. In that case, that was the squeeze. Miller is already done for the night. He's parked it as a result of that incident. A couple different storylines coming in. It's going to be interesting how some of the drivers from those soy boys look to do. They had a rough time for their team debuted as a grouping together. This time out, though, Graham Wildman leading the way for them in fourth, his first time ever at the track. Yeah, doing a great job here up in P4. And, you know, a lot of the drivers I talked to, top to bottom, said qualifying was so important here tonight, JP. They knew that they needed to qualify up front and avoid the, the ruckus that would happen behind them. So with Graham qualifying up there, you know, it's more likely, it's not guaranteed, but more likely that maybe he'll have, uh, you know, some good luck up there. Coming to the green flag, still in control. Stephen Kirby, Patrick Calgill outside. Calgill's way far back, too far back. He's side by side already for second. And looks like a bit of a cleaner run this time. No looseness out the front row from turn two, two by two to the field. Doing a great job so far. As you said, Calgill kind of sleeping on the start there and now has uh, the 24 Gosh. inside, but cautions out again. We'll wait Back to see on the, the field. Oh, there it is. That's Austin Hunter, I believe, in the Flamingo truck. Antonio Bannister, Evan Williams again. Austin indeed involved. Ryan Newman on debut. Not that Ryan Newman. 
Goes through Chatley. This time he's absolutely lost the front end of that truck. Yeah, as you said, Ryan Newman, brand new to PR. Let's see, that's going to be that truck in behind. And oh, it looks like Austin just got spun and then just uh, some people just never stopped for the wreck. That was John. Chatley into the barrier. In fact, that's the first time I think I've seen someone manage to hit the water barrels. And that was the 59. Yeah. There's the difference between the console gaming barrels where it's automatic caution flag and cars keep going. And then there's what Chatley just experienced. The truck exploded. Yeah, that was, I, I, I'm with you. I've never seen that before. So thank you for that experience, but I'm sure you're not happy it happened here. By the way, you said, oh, hold on, let's watch this replay here. Oh, boom. Yeah, there it is. So He's don't do done. that. Yeah. Don't do that, friends, because that's a race ender. Yeah, that's uh, two cautions, two cars out, so that's not good news there. But, uh, yeah, I was going to say, by the way, you mentioned Ryan Newman, new to PRL. So he's a little nervous. It's his first season. Uh, I guess we know he's a Michigan native. We'll talk about that more later, though. But, yeah, not the Ryan Newman. It looks like Austin just got, got a little bit of bump from that black and green truck there, and then calamity has sort of happened all around. Daniel Bannister on the licking of the stamp. He's already a lap down with damage repair in the drive trainer machine. So track position expected to be huge. Let's see Newman again. You're talking about Michigander. Currently a broker at Remax. Here's a look at him. How do you know he's very likely a Michigander or at the very least Michigan roots? Well, all sorts of references to Detroit sports. Put a circle on the Tigers, put a circle on the Lions. What, did you just call Detroit sports awful? No, 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 I'm calling that Michigan Wolverines hat awful. Being an Ohio native, I can't stand for having some awful M propaganda on this broadcast, Justin. Well, I can see why. After all, it's that school. It's that seam up north. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, welcome in, Ryan Newman. Uh, glad to have you around. Oh, look, a puppy. Oh, my gosh, it was a puppy, Justin. Uh, I just I just turned to a five-year-old right there. I didn't even see the puppy, but I believe you. It's Stephen Kirby. Steve, Stephen Kirby is in control of the field. As, oh, is that the puppy you were talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we talked about this last time. He's promoting Noel Fest, which is a car show and dog adoption event this month out in California. So let's see where Zach Panzarella shakes up here. He starts up fourth. Already a good portion of time off the clock. Obviously going to time, but already eight minutes off the clock. Calgill yet again not lined up alongside the leader. He might lose second yet again. Here comes the run again from Sharp. Sharp doing a great job there. We'll talk about the restart zone on the next caution if there is one. There's a little bit of topic to be had there, but yeah, Sharp's got a good run now to the inside that bright purple and orange truck. Now it's getting squeezed by Calgill and cautions out again. And Calgill, I believe, is still up in second. Under caution again. Ryan Newman seemed to be in the vicinity of what had happened. The reason for the caution flag, though, Garrett Austin, 34 truck. He got absolutely sent into the corner, but did save it. If you're more than 45 degrees around, however, in traffic, iRacing will throw the caution. Yeah, they will throw the caution. It is not a lot of time to get that saved before the, uh, before the field will come back around and get you. Now, a couple of things to note here. Let's see if we can find a replay here. What's going to happen? Oh, hello. Yeah, that was a send. Yeah, it's, bit it's a bit too much of it. Uh, Enos said cheerio and uh, heading right in the back there. Now, some of you brought up earlier about, you know, there's trucks you have damage. One of the unfortunate parts of Martinsville, you know, in real life and in racing, Justin, there's not a lot of time on pit road to get your truck fixed. If you pick up damage here, it is incredibly difficult to get any of it fixed. Uh, you have to do it like 10, 15 seconds at a time and try to get back out and not go a lap down. This is not a Dig, it's not a Pocono, it's not even a, a Texas or an Indianapolis where you get lots of time. You maybe get 15 seconds of repair time here. 
This normally the type of racetrack you don't think about the aerodynamics, but chassis damage is a whole another story. Whole another story. Whole another story. Yeah, indeed. So right now we're on our third yellow, and let's see this wreck again from a different point of view. Yep, just send it in there and just use the 14 for the brakes, and then the 22 tried to get in the bottom and avoid the wreck, and I mean mostly did. But that's that's a 72. I'm sorry, not the 22. And uh, you just had nowhere to go in that moment. Well, JP, what's going to happen as this race goes on with each yellow that comes out is these drivers are going to get more desperate to make a pass at the start of a run because they don't know how long they're going to have before the next yellow comes out. Now, getting to the restart zone conversation you want to bring up, yeah. Patrick Cowgill, he does know he can be alongside Kirby. He's been alongside the second row from the outside, holding the whole outside lineup. That's not how you restart here normally. No, so the the challenge that iRacers were facing is about, I don't know, maybe a year ago, iRacing went through and redid some of the restart rules, and it has a speed limit attached to it. And so if you don't speed up and catch the leader before you get to the zone, the speed limits do not necessarily allow you to stay equal to the leader if you're not already caught up, in other words. And so you have to be up there ready to go on the restart. Otherwise, that speed limit rule will catch you. And I think that's what's happening to Calgo. I don't think he's laying back on purpose. I think he's just not getting caught up in time. And then the speed limit of the restart zone is uh, putting him further back, I think. Because going 35 on the inside and 35 on the outside are not exactly equal speeds. Coming to the green flag this time, 28 minutes now on the clock. If we go green, it's an 88 lap affair. Kirby's led the ball so far. Green flag is out, back underway. Yet again, Kirby clears, yet again, Cowgill focusing on second. As Andrew Sharp this time peaking, Cowgill still gets the better run. Yeah, Cowgill is back again. I, I'm not sure. Maybe he's wanting to get back and just get in line like that. Maybe he is aware and just maybe wants to fall back in line as fast as possible and not be stuck in the outside. I don't know. That's possibly the, the, the best he's done in defending Sharp now in our fourth restart. Now we'll see if we get a sustained run so far here. A few drivers saying, let's try something. Never mind, caution flag is out. It's down the back straight away. Zachary Austin, that's his second caution involved in. You know, you could say the same for Evan Williams, because Williams may or may not been the pinball that ended up ricocheting the 45 down. Yeah, I incorrectly called the name, or that is Zachary Austin. I called him Austin Hunter earlier, but that is Zachary Austin right there. And yeah, uh, it's the second incident of the night, so a little frustration inside that truck, I'm sure, is now what's going on, but he'll try to catch the field here. And there you go. Doesn't take long for the pace car to catch you here. Meatball flag for Zachary Austin with the contact to the inside wall. So the potential of another DNF there, depending on the severity. And the tough thing is, here's one thing people may have may not noticed since some of the updates, especially the past two weeks. The meatball flag does not include chassis damage, Derek, meaning if you have a broken tie rod, a broken axle, you don't know until you hit the track. This is how Austin picked up the meatball. Hard contact to the motor. Hard contact to the inside wall. Yeah, right on the front of the motor. So we'll wait and see what the damage is there. Man, this is, this is what our drivers thought it would be. Everyone I talked to today from Patrick Calgill on down, JP, all said this will likely be a caution fest. I don't know how, to, how I would assign that, JP. I mean, there was a car to the outside. I don't know. Someone was talking about, I believe it was Britton Laster, who was having a discussion during one of the commercial breaks, said this is one of the easier tracks on the schedule on iRacing. However, it's about the driving that really makes it difficult because a lot of drivers like to lick the stamp and send it. That is one of the namesakes for this track. It is hard to pass, and a lot of people like to send it from 30th on back. Yeah, they do, because you, you feel that pressure. And then, as I said, with, when every caution that comes out, the race gets shorter and shorter and shorter, and you feel the pressure to make moves fast here. 
you feel the pressure to get a pass done instantly in case the next yellow comes out, you've gained a couple spots. Well, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way that, you know, by being that aggressive, you are the next caution sometimes. So that's what can happen. You see mostly cloudy weather, JP. 70 degrees on the track. This is a night race, which does help the grip on the track a little bit, believe it or not. Uh, these these vehicles are have a little bit more grip in them being a night race than what you'll see in the cup race, both in PRL and in the real life on Sunday. Yeah, this track so far, outside of the initial start, everyone's been, it looks like, aware of the potential getting loose. The fixed setup in the official race is, in fact, in the SLF race just an hour before tonight's PRL action. The common trend to start caution flags, someone hitting the gas too hard, gas. looping it yeah. out of turn four. Spins it out. Caution. Nothing like that tonight so far, Derek. Nothing yet. We can talk about that next time because, yeah, there's a couple ways to make that happen here. We're going to watch this restart from Austin Hunter's point of view here. He's going to try to bump the car ahead of him. Green flag is out. Austin Hunter tried to get Patrick Cowhill to move up. Didn't get to do that. Still two by two throughout most of the field. Three wide, hot of the pack. Marty Calvert, Matt Yolica, forcing Jake Mackey to back up. Yeah, and there's that pressure I talked about of making a move happen because you want to make it happen quick because, uh, you know, you think the next caution's coming. Well, three wide at Martinsville is oh. never a good idea. And there's another yellow. Caution, oh, and we're spinning. wrecking out to the caution. Oh, two, Calvert, three, one four, five. Everybody stacking up a little bit on the inside line. The caution was for Williams. Who ended up getting loose on its hard four, but everybody else, well, they wanted a caution anyway, it seems. They just were like synchronized spinning through that corner, JP. I don't know. It's like the moment the caution came out, I think they stomped on the brakes and they just sort of started looping the car around. Everyone just sort of piled in afterwards and got there. Well, there's a lot to look at in a replay here. And we'll talk about that wheel spin in a moment as well. But look at this. Here's me the sixth truck. This is going to be out of the corner. Yep. That's what you talked about. And there's a couple reasons that can happen. One is that they stomp the gas out of the corner. The second is if that driver is playing with shifting through the corners, which is also something some people like to do here. If you're shifting that car through a corner, it makes it easier for the RPMs to kick up and uh, and loop that car around or that truck around. Pardon me. And it was even worse here. Caution is out. Right about there. Contact. Yeah, I believe that was Alica. I think Alica sent it in very hard. Graham Wildman, the only driver with a meatball flag from the crash. Yeah, Wildman, I'm pretty sure, was the orange car on, or the orange truck on the outside that got hit. But yeah, at first I thought they were just kind of spinning from, you know, slamming the brakes for the yellow. But no, he actually made contact. But now Wildman is stuck in his box here. Right now, it is still Stephen Kirby, Patrick Calgill, Andrew Sharp, top three. That's not changed all race that I can think of, JP. And uh, if this stays yellow like this, it may not. So far, 31 laps turned. Most of the field has yet to pit. Here's the onboard with the three. This is what caused this. Oh. So the three hits the 16. The 16 hits Wildman. And it is sort of... Yeah. Here. By, by the way, I'm going to guess this opinion has changed. Uh, when I talked to Bob in pre-race, he said, for my first time running at Martinsville, this track seems pretty cool. I'm <laughs> guessing his opinion has changed. I can hear the sarcasm in the message that comes on through because this is a very feared racetrack for good reason for some. Here is Wadman. Hometown race, just about was fine until yeah. it wasn't yeah and so to be clear i'm pretty sure we didn't see that camera angle but i'm pretty sure what causes that meatball or that required repair as you talked about is there was contact after the wreck had it just been the spin he likely would have been fine it was the cars piling in there after that caused the uh, repairs needed to that machine he has fixed enough damage for the meatball flag but he still is staying in the box for chassis here's a look coming up here dylan smith on board. 
That might have actually caused more pressure. And there yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to get a meatball, yeah. Right to the axle. And in defense of Dylan Schmidt, and this is a top half part of the little half half and talk about the next level of our other one. It's hard, hard to see around these corners. It's hard to know what's coming until you get there. Cautions, brief cautions. Half a race down, half a race to go. Kirby, Calgill, still your front row. It's been like that the whole time. Back on her way, another good launch though for Sharp. Can Andrew Sharp force anything? It's three wide at the back of the field, two wide at the front. Ooh, lots of scary moves in the back there on that first, first set of corners, but they got it all worked out for the now. I think we're gonna complete a lap. I think that wasn't the delegate getting more than so many laps as here we go, Sharp gets hit, caution. And oh. nowhere to go for Phil Beaver. And everybody else joins in on the party. My goodness. Well, paperclip going to paperclip. We hope you bought your 100,000 pack of paperclips because we're using them all tonight. Yeah, hope you uh, brought some light reading with you or something, a puzzle to complete because there's some caution laps here. Andrew Sharp just got hit from behind really hard. Had no idea that was probably coming. He got turned around and then got hit again afterwards. That's unfortunate for him. You know, for and Andrews really had an incredible what season and a quarter season plus race uh, now in the ovals, Justin. For being a road racer, he's adapted to oval so well. Yeah, he has, but he just got sent. Lick the stamp, send it, and parking oh. lot. Dude, that was Schmidt again. I'm pretty sure. No, that was Hunter. That was on the Hunter initial. inside? Okay, Austin I just saw Hunter. the black and green. Okay. And definitely Schmidt on the secondary. Yeah. Dylan Schmidt has significant front end damage, but no meatball flag. Nick Hunter was the only driver somehow to pick up one. The trucks have become somewhat more indestructible than in other years. Most of the field in RTP survived at Richmond, for example. But you can only take so many hits before you get the DQ. Here's a look from Hunter. This is from Nick Hunter. Here, I'm in Nick Hunter here is going to try to get under it. No. Oh. thought he had it cleared, and I think he got clipped when uh, Sharp was spinning. Oh, no, he's, he's still moving. Okay. I thought for sure the way he hit that outside wall, he was going to be done, but still got that truck moving. But he still he still went and towed, I should rather say, the 19 did. So as we continue to pace, again, your front runners, Kirby, Calcio, Austin Hunter still up there, Pantarella, Brett Adams still in the top five, Dylan Smith in sixth, highest to those who have pinned so far, Antonio Bannister, Kyle Dewey, are only back 18th and 19th. I'm pretty sure the trend at this point, since we, I think both knew coming into tonight, you can make it on a full tank of gas, is do not go in the hornet's nest. Yeah, you got to be up front here. And speaking of being up front, I want to give a shout out to Jake Mackey, current up in P9 tonight. Uh, finished down in the 20s last week, uh, JP, at Chicagoland. Got a new paint tonight, JP. Uh, he's going to start doing some paints this season to honor some of the bands his friends are in. Tonight, it's Lorna Shore is the band he's representing with that paint scheme there. Got the members of the band on the side of the truck and the back of the truck. They're in for a scary ride tonight, JP. All right, been involved in one incident that shuffled him up the track. Now he's inside line in ninth for the restart. Leader in control again for the restart. Kirby, Calgill, Austin Hunter, Panzero, Adam Smith, Beaver Jennings, Mackie, Zach Williams. Your top 10. So far, the battle at Martinsville has seen lots of contact. How does restart go? 15 minutes on the clock. Back underway. And it looks like Calgill has finally adjusted to the outside line. That time, that was the best restart he's had all night. Yeah, great job by Calgill. Finally got up there. 
and made things happen. Oh, truck on the outside wall, that green and black machine back there. Scrubbing the wall, but all is good. We're going to stay green. Antonio Bannister was the one against the wall. We still stay racing. Well, Jennings tries to keep outside. Meanwhile, first battle for eighth position, Jake Mackey alongside, looking to wrap the inside. I see Andrew Sharp now is going to cut to the inside here and try and make this pass. The inside is almost always the optimal way to make a pass here, JP. Unless you have like new tires or a power advantage from a damaged truck or something, you're always going to want to make that pass on the inside here. And most of the field is on the same amount of heat cycles, at least seven or eight. Andrew Sharp, he's trying to get himself with the field, though, even with the contact earlier. Even he said, I'm not pitting, I'm keeping the track position. You see him there side by side, going through that corner, trying to make something happen, hoping that truck on the inside will slip up and get loose and he can make the pass. You see Brian Newman and others on the back. You saw a truck in the wall back there, but all is good. Tyler Massey was that time in the wall in the 62, keeping an eye at the front though. Amonso's also still up front, the Cheers machine trouble, turn one. Marty Calvert this time to trigger the 16 machine. Brains under caution. That was in a stack up this time. Also included Grab Waldman, Edward Peltz in the vicinity. Well, take another mark on the caution counter here. We'll see a couple of first to be Tom Massey right here. Gonna get up into the wall. Oh, the wall saved him, JP. That wall gets the assist, but that was a hockey goal. And that played a bit of a factor for Akasakashi because, as you've seen at the tail end, he cycled right in front of Calvert. It took an extra couple corners, though, Derek, for it to fully develop. Pretty, pretty according to fully play its song, yeah. We'll take a look at the next wreck here. Yep. 16, I think he just... I don't know. It felt like he was just didn't check up in time for uh, that truck in front of him and just sort of slammed on the brakes and got it wildly loose through the corner there. Coming up to 12 minutes to go on the clock. Yeah. He tried to brake hard to be able to avoid the contact. As many people will say, these cars aren't transparent, though, or trucks should say. Well, JP, one of the most famous foods in all of racing is here at Martinsville Speedway. It's the Martinsville Hot Dog. Uh, for the race this weekend in real life, the estimate is they will sell 70,000 hot dogs on the race weekend. It's about 5,554 hot dogs to make a lap around the track. But my question to you, what do you put on a hot dog? Playing and a really? fork and knife. Whoa, 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 hold on. Let's get back to that. Let's watch this replay first. This is wild. Oh. So never mind. I thought the 16 got loose in his own, but he had some assistance from Wildman. Wait, fork and knife? The bun's boring. All right. I, I, <laughs> I, you know, JP, usually I have a retort for anything you say. We, we've been good friends for a long time. I'm at a loss for words. Anyhow, so with how things are going, can anybody make a pass on Kirby? Well, that's a good question. Calgill had his best start so far, but I almost feel like it's going to be up to the to the driver in P3, which currently is Austin Hunter. We saw Hunter pushing Calgill on the start earlier. Will Hunter try to do a little bump and run on, on Kirby? on a restart and make it happen. I, I mean, Austin Hunter's a great driver, a clean driver. He has Barney the Dinosaur in his car. It's still on the purple. car. Yep, he's had it for a while. Time. That's right, you sang the song last season. Yes. He's already used the bumper a couple times. Next in that line is Zach Panzarilla. He has a teammate Dylan Smith alongside. Brett Adams in all of this has slowly but surely gotten him back up to fourth. And so Zach's doing great tonight. Zach had a very hard time in official racing last night. Uh, very frustrated with the amount of cautions that came out of it and had a hard time making passes. So he's doing a great job staying up here in the top six. Let's find out how this goes. 51 laps down on the board. 10 minutes left on the clock. Back underway. Good launch again from Kirby. 
And a big stack up at the heart of the field. Ryan Newman hard into the contact. Around goes Kyle Dewey. And now the caution's out. Nowhere to go for Edward Peltz. And yet again, cautions, precautions. Zachary Williams is your first DQ for incident points tonight. And the hard part about DQs within PRL JP, you don't finish last, you don't finish. So if that is in fact a DQ for incident points, Zachary Williams will score zero points for this race. So nine minutes left, Luke Davis, for some reason, picked up a black flag as well at the top of the restart. Well, the reason is, in all the chaos, he passed everyone on the inside well, that's a way to avoid a wreck. You cannot do that in iRacing. So the 72 will have to serve a penalty under green. Yeah, we'll wait and see if he can appeal it to the admins. But right now, that is the ruling on track. Is You can't pass on the inside here. But that wreck happened quick, JP, and it happened sort of in the back of our camera shot. And it's just another piece of calamity here. We're going to get the replay loaded up soon. But right now, the problem is, I mean, we only really have probably one restart left, and that's if we go yellow again. So now it's going to get more aggressive because now you know that as a driver. You know that the next green is likely the last one. Watch this restart here. Oh. Backed up by Legos. Caution there. And seen a little bit of there with the 72. Past drivers on the inside to get around all the stack ups. Because he made the pass before the start and finish line, that's enough for him to get the penalty in sim. Here's the reason. He would jump. Oh. That was a jump oh, more than a dodge. Yeah, the, yeah, there's no dodging there. That's purely just jumping the start and then tapping a driver afterwards. Yeah, he has to own that penalty and serve it. That's uh, that's it. So we have seven minutes left on the clock. A few laps of cautions left. Uh, I mean, I don't know, JP, what do you think? One, maybe two restarts? left in us it depends on how quick they stack it up the funny thing is brett adams is just picking off spots one by one caution by caution he's up to third in all this and yeah, that's the kind of night you want to have if you're brett adams being very quiet just, you know staying there you know waiting to avoid a couple wrecks and get around it uh i'm sure a lot of these drivers are excited for next week texas a, li a little bigger of a racetrack just slightly I love how on the YouTube chat, for those watching on here on RaceBot TV on the YouTube side, you have one of the admins, I'm guessing it's a producer, Justin Nola, saying the number one thing to do in Ohio, leave. What did Ohio do to the field? Oh, Ohio, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, I mean, I, well, I mean, I left it for Oregon, but it's a great state, has an official nut called the Buckeye, has a great college football team. Uh, has a, a lot of good stuff in it. Cedar, has Gold Star Chili. Cedar Point. Cedar Point. Uh, there's lots of good stuff in Ohio. Well, here we go. Let's restart it again, JP, and see if we can make more than two laps. Cowgill is on the inside line. It looks like Kirby's chosen the outside for the first time. At, hold on one second. How did this happen? Cowgill got the lead. I am not sure... What the point was there? I think he got the score into the lead and all the craziness, and he's gone. Good job for him. Well, let's take a look back at that later if we can and see if he was indeed ahead at the time of yellow. But there he goes, full off ahead. Now he's got Brett Adams up to P2, Justin. And, man, Kirby's down to P3 pretty quickly. Apparently, the time of the caution flag, Cal Gill jumped to the outside aggressively made the move work and now kirby is back to third in all of this so now the fight is on Paladin now for the 72 of luke davis brett adams is up to second caution this might be the race it's close kyle dewey around kyle dewey around the back of the track dewey's been involved in a few incidents here tonight usually not of his doing right there's the leaders he needs to get moving or get lapped yeah, he's going to be okay, I think. So, again, Cal Gill's the leader because at the time of the last caution, he made the pass. Let's take a look at a slow-mo replay. As 
this was the time of the last caution. You see how he's got the advantage, scoring loops, gave it to Calgill. Lights on there. There it is. That's You're the right. difference. It's a razor blade. Yeah, we were so focused on the wreck in the back, I think we never thought to look at the the lead up front. And when you, you're right, the last second we looked up at the pylon and realized that uh, he's in the lead. Patrick, you know, won last week and very likely could win this week off of this caution. They cautioned with about five and a half minutes. So we're going to wait and see if we get one more in us here. I don't know. Kirby is in third for the final restart, likely. Yeah, Dewey. And that breaks suspension. Give credit to Kerr, to him. Keep an eye on this because he tries to keep going. Obviously the meatball flag. It's like, I can't turn. You know what? Oh, hello, leaders. How am I going to get to pit road? Uh, you know what? There's a wall here. Let's use that. Let's use the Chastain line. Watch this here. But the important part is that since he got moving again, even though he's going to pass him right here, if he could control that car enough, he's allowed to pass the leader again, I'm pretty sure. But I think he's just going to try to get down pit road here. Yep, there he is, cutting the traffic, no turn signal. Or wheel, because like, both tires are disconnected. Yeah, just like Michigan traffic right there, no turn signal, just cut someone off. I mean, that's all traffic from that state. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Well, that's all traffic in general. <laughs> so yeah, that's fair. now there is three minutes left on the clock. And this could be interesting. 43 seconds of pace lap. If we get one to green here, we get at least a couple laps on the board. If you get two yeah. to green, you get a, maybe a lap. Anything more than that, you're done. Yeah, that's what keep an eye on the lights on the pace truck. That'll be our indicator of where we are. I think this race has been exactly, unfortunately, what everyone thought it was going to be, JP. There's a lot of wrecks, a lot of bumping, a lot of, you know, banging, a lot of caution flaps, just trying to survive. And that's why there's not been much movement in the standings overall. I mean, people who started up front for the most part, Panzarella, Cowgill, Kirby, are still up front. We have a couple new names up there, but... uh not a lot of movement. There's the pace truck going by again. Here we go. And the lights are, are off. Does the bump and run come into play for Kirby? Does Calgill hold them off for a back-to-back -back win start to the year? Brett Adams. He was outside front row to start, then lost it out of turn two. Can he redeem himself with the Adams family racing truck? About to find out this is the race. Last restart of the race available. Point of return already crossed. Calgill in control with less than two minutes to work. Green flags out. Back to racing. Calgill, good start. Adams, he's looking outside. Too high as Calgill clears. Here comes Kirby looking for third. Yep, there comes Kirby looking for third. Made a little contact with that Barney truck. And all is good. You see Panzarella back there trying to hold off. Dylan Schmidt, Andrew Sharp, by the way, all the way back up to P8 after that spin earlier. There we go, around again, turns three and four. Coming around one and two now, Kirby clears for third spot. Can anybody do anything to get to Cowgill? Thomas restart yet, surprisingly. Give it a moment, though, because Stacey Hunter just booped Garrett Austin out of the way. We're still green with about a minute to go, about three laps if it stays green. It's probably the longest green flag run we've had all race long, JP, here at the end of the run. Andrew Sharp now gets under Dylan Schmidt and makes that pass. So Sharp back up to P6. What a great run by him. Doing a great job here. Now got Panzarella in his sights. It's going to be close on how many laps we get here. Two, maybe one to go at the stripe. We'll find out when we get there. Br Caution, it's going to be the last. Caution is out as everybody joins in again. That's Evan Williams. He's been in everything. Luke Davis gets the disqualification flag. Edward Peltz and Moore get collected. And Patrick Calgill should take the white flag, if not the checkered, this time by. And sometimes about luck coming into the time of the loops for the lead. That's the case for Calgill. 
Zero's on the board. We'll see what Barney waves here. Final lap triggered on scoring. Last lap this time, checker flag and strike. You know, JP, as a driver, you know, or as anything involved in this race, you ask yourself, how do we make it better? And there's not really a way you make this better, I don't think. It's just the nature of what we do here. Let's watch this wreck. Oh, man, that's a wild view of how hard it is to see around these corners here. There was a truck parked on the outside, and he just never knew it. And that's how Pelt finishes with the meatball flag, but it's the final lap regardless. Checker flag waves. For the second straight week, it's Patrick Calgill who gets the victory. What about racing yet again to victory lane in the trucks? That's two for two for Patrick Calgill on the season. And uh, he'll finish with Adams behind him, Kirby, Hunter, and Panzarella in the top five here. While Kirby is excited to win, or, or excuse me, while Calgill's excited to win, I'm sure, JP, I'm curious to see what his thoughts on the overall race are. And the unofficial race results may have an issue because Stephen Kirby just passed the pace car slash pace truck before they finished out. So we'll see how that looks in a moment. But with the pace truck off, Cowgill can now burn it out and celebrate. Everybody else was already scored at the time of that moment. But it's Cowgill. He gets his moment to celebrate. He's your winner tonight, taking the lead one of the final restarts of the race. Let's take a look at them, in fact. Two straight wins. Patrick Calgill gets it done. Brett Adams finishes second. Good recovery. He finishes ahead of Stephen Kirby, who lost the lead. Third and last caution. Austin Hunter, Zach Panzarilla. Once your top five, Andrew Sharp recovers to sixth. Dylan Smith, 16th to seventh. Tanner Johnson, 14th to eighth. Phil Beaver did not reach his goal. He finished ninth instead. Mackie, your top 10. 11th spot went the way of Will Jennings. Then Stacy Hunter, 12. Mike Toomer Jr., Matthew Alvica, and Tom Amassi. Marty Calvert, gun spun around in the later going. Finished 16th. Zachary Austin, 17th position. 18th to Evan Williams. He was in almost every caution and somehow avoided the meatball flags and disqualification flags. Tony Bannister and Gibbard Austin, your top 20. Edward Peltz and Ryan Newman rounding out your lead lap finishers. Mike Richter got the lucky dog to end. He is still going on the track, by the way. Graham Wildman finished DNF to 24th. Luke Davis, 25th. He finished with the DQ. Kyle Dewey, 26th. Nick Hunter, 27th. 17 laps down. He got back out in time to celebrate with the one back grouping. Zachary Williams, meatball flag and disqualification. Chatley and Miller finished DNFs outright. That's a look top to bottom at your unofficial race results here tonight as it's Patrick Calgill who's able to sneak away with this one. Patrick back-to-back -back wins to start the season. Probably not the way you drew it up, but you take the lead on the restart in the scoring loops after a big crash out of turn two behind you. Dude, I think that's my most most uh, exciting moment that I've had in a while. Like. I didn't expect for that to happen. I was waiting for him to make a mistake. I just knew all he had to do was just make one big mistake and I could have got it and I ended up capitalizing on it. So I'm pretty happy about this one. What was the feeling like in the truck knowing you were running second most of the night, in fact? But we're also trying to get those restarts just right to capitalize on what you just said. It was nerve wracking. Um, the the problem is with the new way that the restarts work, you can't go more than, I think, five miles an hour over the speed. And because the lead cars on the inside, they're able to do, you know, 40 and you have to do 45 on the outside to keep with them. So every time I was dropping back a little farther than I wanted to, but didn't really have much I could do about it. And I just happened to get lucky with getting nailing the gas right at the right moment and being able to keep in second there. So Texas is up next, mile and a half circuit once again. How do you feel about the Texas two-step? Um, Texas, I, I have a tendency to get really tight there. Um, I, I think I, I'll do pretty decent, um, maybe possibly compete for the win. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Texas, but you know, 
it's another racetrack, another half mile racetrack, or one and a half mile racetrack. Well, Patrick, congratulations once again on the run tonight. You pick up the win, your second strike. Yep, thank you guys, and I got to thank uh, SRT Sports, Whataback Racing, uh, CTN, MB1, Connecting Cure, you guys at Race Spot, and the guys at PRL that put all of this together. Again, Patrick Calcio, your race winner tonight here at Martinsville. Brett Adams finishes second. He's with Derek. Brett, what a great way to get yourself up through the field tonight. Sort of a quiet way to do it. You sort of kept slowly you know, climbing ranks there, climbing positions. How did you do it? Well, uh, it started off not not so calmly, starting in, in P2 and then bend it uh, out of the, the first corner. Um, you know, on cold tires, you can't really make that move. But um, yeah, the key is you just got to be aggressive without um, without moving somebody. Um, so just pluck them off one at a time. Um, I, I burned my stuff up getting back up to, to P2, so didn't have anything for Patrick, but congrats to him for the win. So obviously a lot of yellows tonight, lots of wrecks, lots of cautions. How do we? How do? You, how does this race get better? In your, in your opinion? Well, I won this race last season. You know, last year, year because of all the cautions, I just I qualified on the pole and stayed there. So, I, I, in that regard, I don't mind it. But you, you really just got to back up your corners. Everybody throughout the field has to back up their corners, and uh, and and don't dive bomb each other. Um, but it can be done. I know we can do it. All right. Well, next week a bigger racetrack in Texas. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, you know, it's more fun in eye racing than it is to watch in person. I've been to that track a couple times, uh, and uh, it's a snooze fest. But um, hopefully we put on a good show for you guys. All right. Well, listen, Brett, great job on the P2 tonight, and we'll uh, see you next week. All right. Thanks, fellas. Let's get Brett Adams finishing second here tonight. Third spot, Austin Hunter, another top five run the past few months. Austin, you used a little bit of the bumper, but in the end, you still get the top three. How are you feeling in the purple truck? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, you know, I first want to make sure I apologize to Andrew. That was not on purpose. Um, you know, there's maybe a little bit of a checkup in front, but also very well could have just missed my breaking point by a lot. But definitely was not meaning to get into him there. And I feel awful that I turned him. And between that and turning him and the uh, eye pacing that we were doing tonight, it kind of put a damper on the night. Oh, I should check myself. Scoring puts you in fourth, I should say, or behind Kirby. But regardless, you're in the hornet's nest all night. How was it being basically, well, the hunter also being preyed upon by multiple hunters? <laughs> it, it was uh, it was interesting. You really had to uh, make sure you perfected every restart because you didn't know when a caution was going to come out in the back. And if you didn't get a perfect launch, and you know, I guess it was maybe the second or third to last start whenever Patrick got by Kirby it was the same start that Brett got me by a you know a millimeter or two and that was really the, the difference between, for me and Kirby that shuffled us to the outside lane and really kind of made the difference in that final couple restarts so Texas up next or I knew we, we were involved in at least one of the incidents yes so it might factor your qualifying side of things your approach for Texas in turn yeah, I'm uh, now expecting to have to start in the back. Um, not expecting I'm going to get any luck there. Uh, but, well, I guess I don't have a very good I rating, but I'm expecting a lot of people to have to start in the back next week. Uh, but it is a home track, so I do kind of run a lot of laps there and play around there a lot. Uh, so, honestly, it's just kind of avoid the carnage. I'm hoping for a tighter setup, one that kind of burns the front tires off, because that kind of comes to my liking. and. Just kind of pick them off one at a time and drive to the front. Be careful what you wish for. That <laughs> is a track known for tight setups. We'll see if it goes 20 out of 10 tight like you wish, Austin. Congrats. I appreciate it. Just want to thank the guys over at Waterback Miracle Flow. Um, you guys are putting on such a great race every week. Um, and just want to thank everybody for watching tonight. Austin Hunter, top five run for him. I'd like to thank him and the rest of the drivers to take time to speak with us during post-race coverage for the Truck Series here on Race Spot. Derek, the trucks had a busy time. They'll have Texas next time, but we still have more paper clipped up next. Yeah, we do. More of the same. Hopefully not in order. Maybe we'll get some green flag laps in. Same, almost the same exact schedule here. Texas, Dega, Dover, Kansas. Darlington Road America. That's the big difference right there in round eight. 
and then to Charlotte. So no North Wilkesboro for the Grand National cars. A pretty awesome schedule for the next few weeks here. Lots to uh, be envious of if you love mile and a half racing. But then let's take a look at the points here, JP, and see how they stand right now after one race. Richard Regan, five-point lead over Dustin Scruggs and Abner Acosta, a few more points. And then Ryan Latshaw, Reese Bogue, Bradley Holly, Ted Lowendick, Jeff Evans, Thomas Inc., and Colton Lane round out your top ten. So far, so very competitive as well for RBM on this side of the card. Very tight the battle, though, between them and Whataback Racing Overdrive, as well as Whataback Racing TNT. The team title can go multiple different ways this season. We'll have to keep an eye on it as the night goes on for the team side. Tonight going to be also an interesting one with the Grand National cars getting their experience now to race under the lights at the paper clip. So that's a look once again at your standings entering tonight. Qualifying just a couple moments away. Final few moments of warm-ups. Of note, you may see some little bit of differences on the paint schemes for some of the fours. In particular, as part of today's updates, iRacing did place the Dark Horse chassis template onto all the fours, meaning each of the drivers with four paint schemes had to do a lot of overtime to get them ready tonight. Yeah, as a driver or a painter or a team owner, it always drives you crazy when those sudden updates happen, when you feel like you have to have your paints broadcast ready at a moment's notice. So probably tonight, maybe not all of them will be ready, but they'll get it fixed pretty soon. Well, qualifying is about to start here, JP, and I think we saw last time with Patrick Cowgill and the others how important qualifying is. So well, I suspect everyone will want to make a qualifying run because apparently track position means a lot here. Yeah, that's an understatement of the day. So we'll take a look at how some of those dark horses look in terms of the paint schemes. We'll also look at who's going to be the dark horses for tonight. Nick McLaughlin did lead the way in final practice with the wall ride in 18-2. Realistic time, 19-1, Richard Regan Jr. Here's Adam Semke. He's starting off the qualifying session. Most drivers are waiting to start the session, it looks like. Zemke wants to get it over with already. Yeah, just wants to get out there and get it done, set the standard, and not worry about it. And some drivers will come out on their own pace here. I see now Morgan's out and others, so we'll keep an eye on that as the night goes on. Oh, far, Zemke in the 19 Fords on his average. 19.6 to start qualifying. Like we talked about in the trucks, need to run the bottom of the racetrack to be fast. Zemke missing a bit of the bottom there. The standard is right now a 19.5 from James Morgan. Uh, great run there. Now, one thing I do notice going to be interesting about this run, JP, is we're qualifying in, I guess, a little bit of the daytime. And then we'll race at night here. So we'll see if the times differ a little bit there. Now, James Morgan, again, a 19.492. You see the notice on the top of your screen is currently your pole sitter. There's a look at the 72. This should be potentially a solid one for Ted Lewis. How about a 19-2 to start qualifying? Wow, He's one of the two, road ten. rainers, and this shouldn't be a surprise. Remember, A.J. Amendinner, his one of his best ovals was Martinsville. Yeah, great job there by Lewandick. over two, almost two tenths of a second faster than the time that Morgan put down. So nice solid run there. Now we'll move over to the 37 machine. Take a look at one of Ted's, woo One of Ted's teammates, that was a little loose. And that's a lot loose. You have to be dialed in on the brake bias, and that is why a lot of drivers have been using a lot of front bias to make sure their cars do not do that, especially at speed. Take a look as the rest of the drivers continue to wait here because it is a much hotter track compared to the trucks. An earlier start time by about a half an hour to an hour. It's 81 degrees track tip. That's a 10 plus degree difference compared to the last that'll, race. Yeah, that'll make a, the track a little bit looser than what we're used to. Also, I think by default for most opinions across all of iRacing, these cars are looser than the trucks. So combine those two things together, combine the more power in this car and it can be more difficult to handle than what the trucks were. And the driver trying to put a time down is Jim Westerfield. And that spot there is going to be good enough for P7 currently as Jeff Evans moves up to P2. 
Expect a lot of shuffling. One of our smaller grids to start the year at least. 23 entries here tonight. A lot of drivers electing, it looks like, take this as their drop. With it being another short track. Of note, expect Thomas Sink to not get a second lap. He just spun Dustin Scruggs. He was a contender last time out. He's scrubbing speed and may have just scrubbed the wall. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Here's Richard Regan. By the way, Richard Regan told me he loves this track. So we'll see how well he can do here in that 56 machine. Looks like he picked up some new sponsorship too. That stint analyzer on the car tonight. Of course, that's one of the main pieces of software a lot of teams actually utilize on the sim to be able to keep up with stint lengths and whatnot and have it on to a spreadsheet sheet, essentially. Well, well, I would agree that tool is useful across iRacing as a whole. Oh, I don't know that he didn't I don't like know that lap and stints uh, here at Martinsville is useful. Here's Dustin Scruggs again. This is his only time he can get in here because he parked at lap one, 19-3, not as strong as he wanted. Well, I'll tell you what, though. We're only really running one lap of it. That's a strong lap right there. I see Regan on the outside. Looks like he's trying to gain speed there. And here's Mark Kalen, PRL commentator. Man, that car wiggled through that corner, JP. Yeah, right now, Kalen in the ballpark of the 19-3s. If he replicates this in the qualifying, this can get him in the top five. And it's a 20 flat. Absolutely not what Bubbles the Wall Sponge wanted. Here's Nick Bayer. He also tried the diamond lines. He's out of time. And guess what? He doesn't get a qualifying in. It's triple zeros on the clock. And that means it's time for your starting grid. Only 18 of the 23 drivers got times in time. Richard Regan Jr. will start on the pole tonight. He set the time in the 19-1s. Then it's Reese Boak, his teammate. He's a short track ace on side. Ted Lowendick starts third. He's within the tenth of pole. Dustin Scruggs, your pole sitter from Richmond, in fourth. Bradley Holly, Danny Cervantes, your top six. Jeff Evans, his pink machine, starts seven alongside Thomas Sink's 48 machine. Then it's Abner Acosta. Far back in the field, he was a late run fast flyer at Richmond. Doug Evans alongside him. James Morgan for Tapio Rosso alongside Adam Zemke. Next up on the grid, it's Colton Lane to the inside of Steve Loving. Then it's Jim Westerfield from 15th. He was six tenths off the pole time. Nick McLaughlin trying to get a lot of speed built in that drink from 16th. Michael Lemieux finished off qualifying in 17th. Last on time, Mark Halen. The rest of the drivers not set times tonight. Dominic again, Daniel Knight. He's one of the drivers who utilized the paint scheme very well for the dark horse. Nick Bear did not set a time. Then it's Dalton Gayer, 22nd. Chris Dean rounds out the field tonight. Nicholas Hunter accidentally joined as a driver. That's what talked about about your running order here tonight for the PRL's Grand National Series. 55 minutes on the clock. Let's get fixed setups here. Hot racetrack to start here tonight under the lights here at Martinsville. Last the drivers jumping onto the grid here. Your keys to win in this car. Uh, keep the car under you. Keep control of this car, whether it be this from keeping it to get loose and, and ready to sit, avoiding the spinning. You'll be okay here. Have some patience. You know, we heard that comment at the end of the interviews for the trucks. If we could back up our corners and be a little patient, maybe we could do some green flag runs here. I don't know, but uh, it, it's hard to imagine JP will see much different than we did in the first race. Who do you think is going to be the favorite here tonight? Outside the pole sitter, of course. Oh, I mean, Reese Bogue uh, told me he, he loves short track racing and that he is, you know, enjoys the style of racing. So I really believe Bogue has a great shot at it. You know, obviously Bradley Holly's a strong contender anywhere. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see how this turns out here. Abner Costa will be back in ninth. That could be a very hard night for him. Restart to our racing night start for the field this upcoming time by an interesting one for tonight is we mentioned the dark horse most drivers just trying to get the template done etc for the fords one of the few fords that want to give a quick shout to is an apology actually derek apparently the 17 daniel knight put sorry danny in reverse for the mirror for when he gets to the 40 for the 57 tonight I should say, 
up towards later on tonight that Toyota yeah, that's, uh, in the 25. It's an interesting way to send a message, I suppose, but uh, you got to do what you got to do and a creative way to do it. I'll give you that. All right, well, here we go, JP. We're going to restart this race here on the green flag. I'm excited for Richard Regan. Let's go racing from the paper club again. Richard Regan Jr. in control. Green flag is out. We're underway for the Pier Oak Grand National Series from Martinsville. Start for Richard Regan Jr. He's already up by three, four car lengths. First side by side, Holly and Scruggs, fourth and fifth. Yeah, great job by Reese Bode. Got back in line there. He's got Lowen Dick behind him. Here's Jeff Evans making a move. Looking a little bit to the inside. A lot to the inside. Scruggs can't find a hole yet to that inside groove, though. And it's much harder to try and pinch with this compared to the truck for that run high side. Yeah, it is harder to pinch with this truck, you're, or with this vehicle, you're right, than it was with the trucks here. Man, there is now the five that's now gotten under uh, that 11 of Dustin Scruggs. And Abner Costa already at the P6. I thought starting at P9 would be a detriment to him, but he's already made up a third of those positions. So far, so solid when it comes to a lot of these drivers. Colton Lane having some troubles in the back. Still green, though, but Lane did get a technical blip. His technical blip got a move by Jim Westerfield. Well, a great job by Westerfield to do something there without spinning him and not causing the caution. So here we are. This is already longer than any green flag run we saw in the previous race, JP. So now beautiful battle there with that old Windows 95 paint scheme on the outside there. And he's trying to get the run down the straight, but of course on the inside, he will likely get past here. Jim Wester, oh, oh trouble front straight away, it's Chris Dean. You know, last place starter not having the race he wants. No caution though, we stay green. But now it's lap traffic time already. As a result, he comes out just seven car lanes ahead of this straight. And this is a track where, luckily, as a lap car, you can sort of sit on the outside. It's frustrating because everyone's going to pass you all at once, and it's never going to end. But kind of being a, uh, a single lane track it should be OK. There's two dark horse cars right there, but get it all worked out. Still up front, though, Regan Jr. setting the tempo. Oh, Abner Acosta, some little slides that Dustin Scruggs behind, getting himself to the inside. That was a massive sin in the first place that set that up. That was a massive sin. New paint scheme there for Abner this season, by the way. Abner now gets back to the inside and gets through here. Now that's the gap right there, JP. That's how soon they're going to be up on that lapped car. We'll see if that causes any kind of kerfuffle at the front of the field. And... The thing is, as the leader, Regan Jr. can essentially say, this is the pace I want to set. You guys fall in line. Because the thing is, with the 55-minute time length, expect pit stops for fuel, at least during a caution. You do not want to end up having to go into the hornet's nest. No. No, you do not. You do not want to have to think about pitting and getting back there in that grouping because one wrong move, one wrong wreck, one wrong anything, and it can be very big way to end your race here. But they're all single file here. They've got this kind of worked out. You get a few less vehicles than we saw in the last race, so that helps with some of the calamity. But they're doing a great job here. All single file, we've all been a little patient here. And a great job here. They're just three and four. They're in, that's one and two they were in, sorry. Yeah, they did get a feel of the setup prior to today. As long as you don't let the thing hop under braking. It's a very solid, stable car. Lots of downforce in terms of setup. You see how the splitters plant in the corner. A lot of these cars, though, before at least, the updates in the past day or so, Derek, were lifting up down the straights that was adjusted in the past day or so. Yeah, a lot of updates this week to the system, so lots of new things to learn. Here's Chris D now getting passed by the leader. He'll officially go a lap down. And now the question will be, when does everyone else catch him? 
matches. Right now, he kind of held up Richard Regan a little bit. If Respo could get him on the front straight, maybe he could make up a little bit of time. But no, it appears like that gap got worse. Yeah, Christine trying to stay high side, but no place to go for the leaders right now. Ted Lowendick changing up the color scheme a little bit to the blue this week. Shuts the door, holds on to the top three in front of Radley Holly. These front runners, though, have to consider the longer this run goes, the more this plays in the strength of the long run racers like, say, a constant company. Now, the good news for Chris Dean, though, A, he's in the lucky dog position. But B, the longer this race stays green, if a yellow does come out, it makes it more likely your leaders will want to pit and you could get your lap back either via Lucky Dog or just get it via the wave around. So Christine is the one driver right now who wants this thing to go green for probably another 10, 15 laps so that the drivers would think about pitting under caution. There's Daniel Knight. He's inside of Mark Halen. And so far, the Tommy's pub Whoa. machine having some troubles a bit here and there, such as near contact. This is for 14th place on the track. And there goes Kalen. Remember the brake hop? Mark Kalen just hopped it. Oh, that's the caution. There it is. Caution yeah, flag. Said, Lap more 18. than 45 degrees on track, sorry. That'll bring it out. Yeah. And a lot of these drivers are in the 50s on brake vice. The default is 60. You know the thing is? The more further you go forward, the more twitchy it gets like that. Yeah, we should probably explain explain the brake bias to our audience and what it does. Respoke faked me out there. Nice job, Respoke. I thought he was actually going to pit there. I'm not sure if he knew if he was going to pit. Honestly, yeah. JP, I'm not sure if that was a fake out or if he kind of wanted to read the field. But getting to the brake bias, that sign of two ended up cooking it. But also, if you miss the brake mark, you miss it entirely. So the brake bias is a, an adjustment the drivers can make in car that can affect how the car behaves based upon basically there's Morgan down pit road, by the way, a few others. So Morgan's decided maybe new tires could be a benefit if uh, this race stays green for a while. I was going to say that bias, you move it forwards or backwards in the vehicle and it affects how the car behaves. It's one of the few adjustments you can make in a fixed setup race. Apparently the 66 elected not to stop in the box. And that's a tough play for Dominic Begin. Steve Lubin and a couple others. This is a tough pit road too for pit stops. That's why some of the drivers sometimes wait till the second time around to avoid getting lapped. Remember, essentially in the sim, you go negative, that's essentially to the front. If you go positive, that's essentially to the back in theory. The tough thing is at the same time, Derek, is you can also adjust it before you get in the car. However, whatever you set it in one of the few things you can change in a fixed setup is what you're adjusting to. You can say if you get the bias wrong before you start the race and it's off by four, you can't get to the exact number you need. That's true. So the, the difference in the bias, the more forward it is, um, the, it feels like the brakes will bite a little harder and stop that car. And I'm not sure this is what got Mark Kalen, but in the sense of what you saw from Mark Kalen, a lot of forward brake means that the back of the car can wiggle around a little easier. Uh, if you move that bias backwards, you know, it doesn't have that problem, but maybe so, you, know, you don't brake as much or as quick as you want to, I should say, and uh, it's harder to check up for things. All right, about nearly 10 minutes off the clock. Longest green flag run of the night. About 18 laps before that last yellow. So far, so now, every, everybody's on the lead lap. So now I think the question becomes, if this stays green again, let's track those cars that came down pit road, Morgan and others. Right now, James Morgan's going to line up pretty deep in the field. I believe he's going to line up uh, 17. But if this stays green, JP, did he make the right call? We'll find out pretty soon. 17th on back for those pit stops. Regan Jr. Reese Bogue, your front row. Lowen Dick, Holly. Jeff Evans, Acosta. Scruggs, Sink, Cervantes, Zemke. Later in control, down the front straightaway for the restart zone. Green, green, green. 
back underway. Good launch for the outside. Bo likes to go in the line. Holly wants to go outside. Well, great start here. Seemed too wide all the way through the back, except for the couple front drivers here. Ted Lowedix now going to try to make a pass on the inside. And everyone's almost got a single foul out already here. Doing it pretty quickly, in fact. We go so long on the outside. We'll see if Holly can find a hole. Caution, doesn't matter. Ted Lewandick's going loop. Nick Bayer's season continues to start rough. It's Dominic Begin and Chris Dean joining in on the parking lot. All three pit during the caution. Yeah, that's unfortunate to see and kind of kills the hopes of those who pitted to get up to the front here. So now we're into that caution, breeds caution kind of moment. So, cautions, breed, cautions. Nick Bear got the worst of it. He was the only one who was a TV panel from it. It may lose the deck lid. So, no drivers who pit picked up any spots. That's how quick the yellow went. Probably Holly also will have to try the outside again to try and get third place. And that's a very tough task at any track, and especially here at Martinsville for Bradley Holly to pass on the outside. You know, by default, you know, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, the track has already left some grooves for the drivers to use. Here, by the way, is that wreck. Oh, the double zero just got loose to the inside. Like, and uh, I don't think this didn't know there was someone down there. Maybe he just missed the spotter call. But uh, yeah, not clear would be the spotter call there. He definitely looked like he had the exact same thing I just talked about. Brakes. You hit it too quick. Yep. With the ROM bias setting. Yep. It's basically like breaking with an egg. You smash the egg, shell breaks. Down it again. He tried to avoid it. Instead, he became it. He did pretty. I mean, he got it checked up there pretty quick. He did make some contact, but that could have been way worse. By the way, something we talked about a little bit from Crush I'm going to back to the car part. Martin was a track track hard as a driver under yellow. When you begin the corner, if you're coming into one, for example, and the wreck is out of two, it is you have no vision out of two until you're almost out of two. So, yeah, you know a caution is somewhere, and you're trying to check up. But you're also kind of playing a guessing game of where to go, where not to go. Because until you get there, it's incredibly hard to see that wreck. So Maybe pacing... later, probably one of those wrecks, we can get a, a, a view like that. Sorry. Yeah, we'll see. But I think we're about to see a restart. Two quick cautions. Regan Jr., Bogue. You're still your front row. No major changes in the positions outside. Cervantes back to 10th spot for the restart. He is right in line for the apology from Daniel Knight, in fact. We'll see if he notices or if he gets the apology sent to him via bumper. The physical bumper. Back underway. And Reese Bogue nearly spun the tires. Huge checkup from the tire spin. Two and three wide towards the front and midfield. Well, I'll tell you what, while he did almost spin the tires there, that's maybe the best he's done at almost sticking up front with Richard Regan. As far as one and two, but you're right, people behind him got scared and backed it up a little bit here. Now, the benefit to that for some drivers is how we're already, what, single file with the top seven or eight all the way through here, but... Nearly a caution. Steve Loving went sideways through the corner, side by side again for third spot. Bradley Hawley has now ripped the inside line away from Lowendick. Can he find a way around the baby blue machine, though? That, of course, without teammate Joey Tebbin this season. Ted has a few more teammates on track, but Joey Tebbin, not one of them this season. But that paint scheme still looking familiar across their team paint schemes. Bradley Holly gets it done cleanly. He gets the inside line. That big for if there's a yellow flag soon, but he wants more. Reese Bogue is struggling after the tire spin off the restart. Holly is seeing some chances. The fours missed the bottom in the past two corners. Yeah, Brad is looking for a miracle and trying to flow right through here and get into that pass for P2 up around Reese Bogue. Reese said he loves short track racing, doing a pretty good job tonight. 
And uh, Regan Bogue Motorsports presenting pretty well with a 1-2 run. Still wrapping the bottom they go here. New fast lap, Colton Lane, interesting enough. He's six seconds behind the leader. That's a good way to get a fast lap here. That is yeah, a point. Have, yeah, to have that clean air in front of you, you get to run your own line and not be forced into someone else's breaking points it can easily allow you to uh, maybe make a faster lap. But in the grand scheme of things, it's hard to uh, make up any, any big space at a time like this on track. Juju trying effect currently up towards the front with the patience game on. So now it's the question of, did you play the right call? 17th still, where the drivers who have pit or been involved in incidents are currently. Hearing a lot of checking up though. There's a look at Mark Halen trying to make some passes on some of those cars like Dalton Gayer. James Morgan also follows suit. Side by side for third, meanwhile, that's after a checkup from Reese Bogue. Hawley nearly set the four, and instead of doing that, he said, I'm gonna let you save it. Ted Lowendick says, thank you for the spot instead. Yeah, Lowendick's trying to make this pass on the outside here, trying to power it through and, and really use that monster move here to get around the outside. It's hard to think he's gonna have enough muster to do it here, I don't know. Still do it if there's enough checkups inside. Instead, Ted so says, you know what? I can't get it a stick, it looks like. Behind the grandstands, and he misses the bottom entirely. In fact, he misses the middle. Holly still can't get the job done, even though Lomadix missed the bottom groove that he needed a part of that higher line. Two laps right there. For those wondering why I'm saying bottom to the middle groove, if you get the bottom portion of that middle line, you can still defend. You go up there you're losing ground yeah i was going to say earlier luckily the track is sort of painted for these drivers a groove to be in um this i guess lighter colored space here through the corners has some grip in it if you get your car up into that darker part of the corner it's just like being in no man's land up there you uh, will lose a lot of time and a lot of space very very quickly if that happens store First side-by-side -side battle on the racetrack amongst the leaderboard. The air side-by-sides right now for 15, 16 spot with the fresh tire groupings. Still no give or take amongst these two. Nice, clean racing. And when you run side-by-side -side with this length and give up the ghost like that there, it shows respect. You know who's saying, that's respectful, I'll just take the spot instead. Jeff Evans looking for fourth. Yeah, great job, Jeff Evans. He told me his goal tonight was just to crash less than everybody else. Jeff told me he was expecting a lot of calamity, a lot of contact tonight, but so far doing pretty well here. And now we've got a couple of different camera angles going on at once here. Look at that Snick McLaughlin back there with the Yes, it is. He's amongst those trying to move on the strategy. He's back there on tires. That's Michael Lemieux. He's been pushed up out of the groove. Big checkups up the road. James Morgan, Jim Westerfield just made contact in that battle. Caution flag is out. Bottles it all up. Dalton Gayer, Nick Bayer involved. Dominic began again. Yeah, they were three. Well, it's Morgan at almost at the time of that caution there, so we'll wait and see what actually brought it out. But a lot of impatience happening here across the track. As in a, as that run goes on. You know, the, the, it's that time dwindles and you have to be a little less patient than you were in the beginning. Now, rewind in the second grouping of cars checking up was the cause, believe. Here's the look. That was, ap that was oh, after oh, huge checkups. Nick Bayer ran through someone there. And again, this is all a trigger from Believe your driver, James Morgan, who made contact with Lenserfield. Pit stop time as Regan Jr. and Moore go in. Scruggs and a couple others stay out. This has opened up Strategy's Pandora box. Yeah, this has opened up a few different Pandora's boxes. Now, you have to imagine Richard Regan, Reese Bogue, Lowendick are going to be behind some drivers in, in new territory they've not faced yet so far tonight. And I bet some of those drivers who, stay, who pitted before are going to stay out. This is going to be a whole new race very, very quickly. So, 
27 lap difference between third, fourth, and fifth to everybody else. The top two have not taken rubber. Now, this is a very interesting call because you can make it work, yeah. But tire spin's becoming huge down on the tire resource. Tire spin's so. become a big problem here. It, or it could. Right, because now you got Dustin Scruggs and Thomas Sink. That's the white car there on the inside. And Thomas Sink is that orange and black car on the outside. They have not pitted. Then you've got, I believe, Mark Kalen, Steve Loving, James Morgan. They pitted under, I think, two cautions ago at this point. And then Regan on back just pitted. So we're going to have basically three different strategies playing out all at once. Um, could, be a, could be a recipe for disaster. About to find out. It's about to flare out. Morgan, the last of those on some of the freshies. Remember, some of the reason these drivers third, fourth, and fifth are staying out is there is just one tire set for those who have come in twice per tires. For these, they have two left in the pits, have to play this the right way. Cervantes, the biggest loose in the pit stall, six to 17. Eight, in fact. 17. Tire spin for the outside. It's Thomas Sink. Able to hold on to it. Now they race hard. First on the freshies through is Reese Bow. Oh, they're slamming for four. Here we go. James Morgan sent around. Caution flag is out. And they're stacking up. And somehow, no one else slams in. Yeah, somehow Morgan got that thing turned around and saved. And... No big contact, but he had definitely looked like got bumped from behind by the car behind him. And uh, yeah, the caution is out. Luckily for Morgan, for how many cars are behind him, uh, he made out okay. First, let's let's see what happened with Danny Cervantes because he lost a lot of track position. Would have been up towards that front of the field, and then. This is what the trouble is when you run a curved pit lane. Oh, it's like an Austin Powers scene all over again, Justin. He kept trying, trying, and then got there it. it. Is. But the field this time, well, tried, tried, tried to power through the old tires. And some of them fought back. Yeah, just a, just a... Uh, a mixture of three different sets of tire strategies they're playing out. There was no tire spin. I mean, there was a little bit of tire spin part of me up front. That caused some of it. Then you got four tires brand new versus not four tires. Watch this here. Yep, that's a door check. And wow. And look at Morgan. Great job getting that under him and holding onto that car. I um, mean, for how hard he got bumped by the 48, that could have been very bad news. By the way, Thomas Sink all the way back there. Uh, that's surprising. He started up front, but was so off on the tire pace that, uh, look at this here. Well, they were four wide. Four wide twice up. Holly nearly got oh, some turn from that. As a commentator, there's something you don't ever want to say. Four wide at Martinsville. Yeah, usually that is um, a race ending combination instead. Yeah, that's right. That's where, like, in go-karts or I don't even know what. I, I don't ever want to say four wide at Martinsville. So, a few minutes ago. Here's the look on board Morgan. That's and incredible. Everybody has the awareness of what's going to happen here. But it really shows the power of the, of the tire spin and the old tires and the fact that, I mean, Thomas Sink, who started up in P2, was already behind Morgan that quickly just shows how fast he Thomas Sink fell off the pace there. Scruggs did a good job. Scruggs is still up front in P1. Now has Mark Kalen on new-ish tires and then uh, Reese Bogue on brand new tires. Now we're going to run him down here. Now the real problem could be that some effect that Thomas Sink is in P4. That could really check up that top line this time. Apparently, Bradley Hawley did pick up some damage in the midst of that restart tour now hearing. His cap has also just forwarded temperature issues, potentially. That's so interesting. We'll I don't think he got hit in the front that time, so that must be from a previous incident. I don't know. Not sure we may see the blow up of the temps, but obviously, you can't take the tape off. Dustin Scruggs. 
Mark Kale in front row. Kalen plays it too careful. Bo quickly to second. The old tires are off and away in the heart of the field. Fresh tires. Reese Bogue, the first on them, still two by two. As everybody tries to get through the old tires, Thomas Sink fights back. Reek Jr. continues to get huge checkups. Yeah, this is that problem for Regan. When you talked earlier about being back in the Hornets' nest and back in the in the fight there, because now it's going to be difficult to make some passes and get around people. You see someone like a James Morgan or a Jeff Evans up there ahead of him who have cleared it are having a much easier time. Now Jeff Evans is going to now try to make the move on the inside here, Morgan. Morgan gets down here and blocks it for now. Here's Thomas Sink. He has not stopped for a pit stop yet this race in. He's paying the price for it right now. Expect him to come in if we have a long enough run or any sustained run. Listen, I respect the decision. Sometimes you have to do something different, see how it works. You need to know. Here we go, Bradley Hawley and Thomas Sink. Pow, right into the front hood. That time, contact coming in late from the 36. And sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. Guess who was the bug? I love that expression. There's so many ways to say it, but you're right. Sometimes I say sometimes you're the bat, sometimes you're the ball. But yeah, you're right. And right there, Thomas Sink, Bradley Holly, and others involved. Watch this here. Ooh, Holly just got turned by the 56 by Regan. And then Sink and others were just collateral damage. Oh, that's Dalton Geyer who then smacked in the front of Sink afterwards, I believe. At least eight different drivers picked up four exits from that insane moment, by the way. But Thomas Sink, well, he's definitely pitting now. Let's take a look at Geyer. This is this 36. Here. Watch this here. Right now, Geyer knows there's a checkup here. Oh, no, he had time, a little bit of time, but that just proves how fast that wreck comes up on you here. Believe he may have gotten help. Yes, he got help from Chris Dean. Christine, Christine, Christine. Are you singing? Uh, I try not to. I, I just, not sure if you call that singing, but I, I was. Yes, yeah, sorry. I was. In, I was singing my my inner Beyonce with the new Jolene cover she did last week. I didn't even know there was a cover for that, but that's not the focus. Incident points could be the trouble spot for some. There are at least six, seven drivers with more than four, if not eight, incident points. Should say eight. Regan Jr. in all this is the leader of the race. He was the leader before all this and uh, three straight four X's in about three straight restarts or incidents gets you that category of leader in incidents. Yeah, and that's not where you want to be. We saw it in the truck race where if you get DQ'd from this race, JP, as I said, you don't finish last. You don't finish. You're going to score zero points here and only being week two of a nine-week season, you do not want a zero to be a drop it, week here. You can't even drop that, I don't think. Uh, I think you can. I'll have to double-check the rule book. I'm not positive. I'm pretty certain if it's a disqualification, it doesn't count as a drop. Fair enough. That may be, you're right, that may be the rule. We'll have to take a look and see and verify. Maybe Nick Hunter can talk in our ears in a second once he reads the PRO rule book and verify for me. But you're right, that's a that's a problem. Um, that, that'd be a championship play. definer. Oh, it would be. Yeah, it'd be very, very hard to come back from that. Now. This, well, this race has been uh, in some ways cleaner than the truck race, JP. It's still frustrating for the drivers because of that start-stop mentality. But definitely a cleaner race than we saw last time. I think it's a bit of the smaller field. It is definitely helping contribute to that. Another race start. Still all tires. As the RBM machine of Scruggs is in front, Bogan second. Kalen still on old tires. Morgan is still out there on old tires. Then Freshies, Evans on backish. So far, tempers are flaring, but still 26 minutes on the clock. Scruggs still keeping those old Goodyear Eagles afloat. Reese Bogue way far back for the restart, back underway. 
Scruggs, despite the old tire shape, he's doing a really great job with these restarts, keeping his tires under him, not spinning them. You know, doing a great job. Still up, got a small gap in the lead here on the field. Side by side, multiple roads deep. Old tires versus new tires still. Evans plants his way back to fourth, near contact for second though. It's getting a little bit chippy. A bit of short track racing going on with all the beating and bumping. Some of it between Bogue and Mark Kalen. Man, Bogue is really trying his best to get around Mark Kalen and uh, just trying to clear himself, if you will. A lot of side by side trying to get themselves sorted out here on some of these entries here with how this is all playing towards the later stages of this race here. What kind of goes to the mind knowing at this point on, track position is going to be difficult based on the timing, even if you don't factor in the laps. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. So what it really means here, probably, unless something weird happens, JP, is no matter what happens from here on out, you're going to be on the tires you're on. You're not going to think about pitting for tires again. You're not going to think about new tires. You're going to have to deal with what you have, unless we go on a long run, unless we go run for maybe 10, 15 minutes here, then everyone will come in together. But if we keep having any short runs, then uh, no, no one's pitting again. So you're gonna have to kind of make it work and wait and see what can happen. Morgan there got passed by a couple of drivers there, got stuck on the outside. You saw it there, that black and blue car. Although checking up behind him though, way up the groove that time, Nick McLaughlin. Also trying to join in Daniel Knight, also some bumping and scraping behind Cervantes. Already recovering to the mid-pack after the hit road snafu. Trying to find a way around loving Adam Zemke, trying to force him up high side, does. Great job here, lots of great racing. Everyone using that inside groove to try to make their passes. It's the old Microsoft Windows car there. Still gotta love the paint scheme here. Well, right now, it's Curly trying to hold on and prevent a beating. Cervantes, hard check up to the back end. And right now, for a lot of these drivers, it's the queue up moment of, do we get a long run and have to boot on some fresher tires soon for most of this field? We are already, in some cases, 25 laps into these tire stints. Yeah, the question, if we get a new tires or not, will be, can we stay green for a while? If this race stays green, I think for 10 minutes, if we get down to about the 15 or 13 minute mark on this before the next yellow comes out, I think everyone would be inclined to come down and put tires on together. But if we continue these little short three, four minute runs, then probably not. Here's a pass on the inside. That's a 41 car getting around the 60. Make it look easy. Very easy, in fact. That's Chris Dean for position now, by the way. He's now after all this, Got himself into some battles. Not having an easy time though, because Lemieux's trying to make a move and Dean is struggling to plant the car at the bottom of the racetrack. He's hitting the curbing a lot. Yeah, and that's not what you want to do here at Martinsville, because hitting, oh, well, there's Thomas Sink around and he's going to get it moving, but the leaders are coming fast here. And he's going to come down pit road. And no caution, but this could be a controversial one. That was for the lucky dog. Nick Bayer just turned up for the lucky dog. I'm not sure if we can get back and get a look at it later, but I was going to say, here it is. Let's do that right now. It's got to the inside. I, man, I don't know. Sink was kind of trying to pinch there, I thought. And sometimes when you pinch, there's a cost to the, doing business. But yeah, Bayer just seemed to really get up under him and not let loose. You pinch, you pay. That's everyone's right. favorite phrase. And a lot of people like to make you pay quick. There's the pinch. Here's your payment. And you gotta give him a little space there. I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's kind of close. Uh, it's closer from in car than I thought it was out of car. I'll be honest. But coming back to the curbs, you said the drivers are sort of hitting those curbs. The, the, the danger at Martinsville is you hit those. Trouble turn two. James Morgan around. Caution flag is out. And Morgan, oh, man, oh my! Killed. Chris Dean out of the groove hits him. Oh man. Chris Dean just plowed through the side of James Morgan. Oof. Meatball flags for both. That's definitely going to be an interesting look back because Chris Dean was the only driver to the outside of a car at the time of caution. Yeah, Morgan just got loose here. 
did the right thing. He has it stopped here. And wow. That's uh yeah. 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 Christine out of the race. James Morgan has a very broken suspension. Here's a look. I mean, this is sort of a case we talked about at Martinsville. Did, did he a hit the brakes bit. at all? No. I, like, we can see it one more time. I, then we'll listen in. He lifted, but I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I, he could have went wider. It's always easy to say. Hold on, listen. He's off. He's off the gas, but I don't think he ever breaks. He's like a dog going on around the outside there. Well, James Morgan had to, I guess, depending upon your terminology, JP had to either crab walk it back, uh, or as a term I just heard in my ears, he had to dog walk it back. I've never heard that one before, but I guess that's the same thing as a crab walk. Yeah, he's going to be in there for a while because of that. My guess, there's some, the, my guess is there's, there's some frustration inside that car as well. Nick Bear also, because of what he did, ends up being the lucky dog after the pinch and pay situation. Thomas Sink is six laps down and out of the race. Dustin Scruggs here. He was a contender last week. We know he's good at short tracks. He might have a chance here if it does not go green here. You mean if it doesn't stay green, that means what you mean. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's, he's the last person not to pit uh, with now Reese Bogue, Jeff Evans, and Richard Regan, two, three, four behind him, and even Ted Lowendick in five. Abner Acosta very quietly in P6 tonight. Uh, anything's possible. Uh, I've been surprised by what these guys can pull off before, JP, but I don't, I don't know. It's just, this is hard to, uh, hard to imagine he can make this work. You see him now trying to scrub some heat into those tires. There's a lot of debate across the Irish community about the idea of scrubbing and how much it does or doesn't work and if it works and a lot of debate to be had there. But I'm going to come back to this debate we started in the truck race because I, I need to hear about this. No ketchup, no mustard, no relish, no onions, no chili. Nothing your hot dog. It's just a plain dog and a fork and, and, a fork and knife. Wrap it in bacon and we'll talk. Oh, all right. I mean, I'm down for that. We, we can do that, but all right. Coming yeah, up. You, we'll, we'll talk about this in the next question. I have a question about brats, but we'll do this first. Eight, 18 minutes to go. 55 estimated laps if we go green. And 15th on back pit. Scruggs yet to pit. Looking to make it work still, back in her way. Regan Jr. on all this is back outside, looking for third. Here it comes, Bogue to the outside for the lead. Bogue doing a great job keeping up here side by side. I think the difference of the tires are now in here, we're trying to try and get a little bit. Trying to struggle around this at the bottom and get a good run off. Still too wide for the lead, missing the bottom, Scruggs. Acosta sent three wide to the top of the racetrack. Everyone lets him on in. For the lead though, Bo gets the edge. Scruggs scrapes his team boss, but it's Bo to the point for the first time this season. Wow, very close race to the line. It would be Reese Bo if that had been the final lap, but a very, very tight battle here. Look at this behind of Re Richard Regan now kind of pushing Reese Bo through. Jeff Evans pushing the 11 through on the bottom here. Still trying to wrap top side. Bo gave it a clear. It's co team owner. Outside, bottom line. Scruggs trying to battle it out inside still. Jeff Evans trying to find a way around. Trouble back. 66 around. No caution yet. We stay green. Oh, there it is. Oh, maybe not. No caution. And this may break. be a caution. If Begin doesn't get going, he does. We stay green, but the top two are RBM machines. Bogue and Regan Jr. One and two, it's a one, two, three with Scruggs thrown in. Jeff Evans looking for some sense on behind, trying to hold it back Lowendick. Yeah, look how Lowendick was sending it in there, by the way. Catchy kind of washed up just slightly through that corner. 
because of how deep he drove it in there. Went a little wider this time. Had a great Put job this watching. into your how is this not a caution video? Yeah, there were cars around him and he was spun around. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain sometimes. And then you got this about 19 point turn that he's going to make to get a car moving back around again. Michael Lemieux also picked up a 4X from all the contact. Wants those towards the back trying to work on fresh tires. Can throw Mark Kalen into that conversation. He's already in 10th on the freshies. But the battle for the lead is on. Side by side. Regan Jr. inside. Bogue giving a lot of space to your 2023 series champion. And it looks like Regan Jr. gets it done for the lead edge at least. Bogue keeping the fight up at least high side. Uh, the problem they're going to have here as they battle side by side is who benefits or doesn't benefit from this lap car on ahead here. Could that lap car be the determining factor on who does or doesn't need it this race? But right now, Regan, I think, is going to clear it first. That's the 66 up there. That's that spun car we saw about five laps ago. Regan is clear, Justin. Roger Regan Jr. reclaims the top spot with 14 minutes on the clock. Full nighttime affairs now. Here's a look in the heart of the pack. 41, wrapping the bottom, it's Doug Evans. Also trying to make some moves, Michael Lemieux. Also doing that, Jim Westerfield. So the difference on strategy is becoming prominent back there. Up front, not so much yet. No, not so much prominent yet, but we'll see what happens here. But look, great job by Scruggs. I want to put this out again. P3 on those tires and, and really holding his own. And he's not shaking up the field. He's not holding one up. He's not wrecking anyone. Just out there managing tires in a very admirable way. Mark Halen, you have to put a star next to his movements here. He's up to ninth. Now, here's the problem. When everybody's training the bottom of the racetrack, Derek, some drivers need to try things different. As much those the only ones trying to use the outside. Here's the interval between first and third. Look at that lap time. Just a tenth difference because of all the tire cycles. Scruggs still has older tires and green flag laps, but is still matching. Doing a great job. Doing a very, very great job here in that McConey setup shop machine. And we're gonna keep it up here, getting a little bit of trail off of Reese Bogue. And we're going to come out here with about 13 minutes left, JP. And they still haven't caught that lap car. I also Trouble. Turn. Caught it. Hold on. Danny Cervantes gets turned around, pit entry and exit. Abner Acosta, the one to help him. Oh. And we're under caution. Let me Danny tell you Cervantes, something. broken suspension. I have a lot of respect for Danny Cervantes. He is a driver who seems to always find the bad luck in a race. Like, I feel like for Danny, if he didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all, JP. He just always seems to find himself in the middle of something. He's going to get bumped here. Oh, he caught those barrels we saw last race. They did not break this time. Or did not Apologies. break the car this time, I should say. Apologies and oops over the radio. Only Danny could find a way to hit the barrels in that specific way. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Danny. He's had such bad luck recently. Scruggs is committed to the no-stopper. Adam Zemke, the first of those to the pit lane here. Nick McLaughlin and a couple others with them. Lucky dog, this caution, James Morgan, he only needs 10 more cautions, not physically possible, to be able to get on the lead lap. But everyone else trying to play the strat game. This would put these drivers about 14th on back. Bart Kalen might have a chance to be able to pounce, though. Here's a look at Abcasta's view. Yeah, I just got in the back of him and got him turned around and Tried to back off of him, but just never got it saved after that. But I would give a shout out here to James Morgan, and not because of my bias of a, being a team owner, but just any driver. Look at it, 10 laps down, still out here running for points, JP. That is how you points race. That is how you come back and gain some points or an official racing. That's how you That's how you salvage I rating. There's a lot of drivers in James's position who would have already called it a night. Right now, though, the best he can finish, unless there's a DQ or 10, would be 21st, officially. Regan Jr., the leader over Bogue, but there's a lot of thoughts to potentially keep an eye on. Mark Kalen, 7th, I was talking about him. He was trying the outside a couple times before that caution. 
with him getting around Abner and Danny. He's got the inside groove for the restart coming up here. He's got the freshest tires in the top 10. Yeah, so I'm excited to see how this all plays out here. Reese out way wide there. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be picking up any garbage or dirt if I could help it here. So, all right, lights are on. So I got some time to ask this question. So JP, I know you feel about hot dogs. What about brats? What about bratwurst? It, you put a, you put that in a bun. I don't remember the last time I ate bratwurst. Fair enough. Italian sausages or polar sausages, though. Yes, it's a bun because otherwise you burn your hands. Okay, fair enough. Just, I'm just trying to see what the what the what the baseline is here uh, of hot dog preference. Of course, as we said, Martinsville known for their hot dogs, so that's where this topic came from in my head. Uh, to ask you about earlier, and I was stunned that you're a you're a fork and knife hot dog eater. I, I, I respect it, just never heard of it before. Restart on leader, nine and a half minutes to go. RBM one, two, three. Does it hold? First tires for about seventh place, and then scattered all the way back to 14th. Green flag is out, back underway. Good launch again for the front two. Couple drivers trying to let others go on by, but keep an eye on the battles in the heart of the field. The fresh tires are hungry. Yeah, indeed, they are very, very hungry. Look at this, though. Despite how hungry they are, man, Dustin Scruggs was kind of holding his own, but now Lowen Dick, Jeff Evans, others getting anxious behind him with only about eight, nine minutes to go. And I thought they were just gonna wreck that whole part of that field right there. Mark Kalen now digging to the inside. Once again, the 17 staying up there. Daniel Knight, highest he's been all night tonight. Kalen still has the speed difference. Colton Lane's on the same cycle as Mark Kalen. Look, just how fast that inside lane is, JP. Of course, just science teaches you that just, you know, being the inside of any line is always the shortest way around. And you can feel it sometimes in how that behaves and how it reacts. And that's how Mark Kalen gets that pass done. Eight minutes to go on the clock. Nearly cautions towards the back. Bradley Hawley starting half the wiggles, though, in front of a fresh tire pack. Acosta right now the bridge between that and the old tires. Oh, in contact. Hawley squeezing Acosta up the track. Apologized on the radio. Uh, I was had a really hard night here. Started P9, got it up to P6 uh, six at one point. Now back in P9 with Bradley Holly for ninth and 10th. And now Mark Kalen way to the outside. Oh, that's the break issue again. Three wide for a moment. Zemke wanted to go. Instead, he keeps it two wide. And really checked up Abner Acosta pretty hard so that he wouldn't have to run over Mark Kalen. Mark Kalen here back under it again. Man, looks how wide he runs that corner. You talked about it earlier. He's one of the few drivers really trying to make the outside work. And I just don't think you can make the outside work at Martinsville. I, I really don't. Not as easy with this car. Maybe the cup car. Apparently, the report is 62 loose on that. That's more than loose. That's missing oh, your brakes. Man. Wow. Oh, and he, in live action, he's three wide again. Now it's near four wide. Here comes McLaughlin. Oh, three wide again. Here we go, that's trouble. Steve Loving gets turned, caution flag is out, bumper parts everywhere. And this could bring us to the final restart, very likely in fact. Wow. I feel like that had been cooking for a while. That had been boiling in the pot, if you will. And uh, man, that was just, oof. Steve Loving already has towed the car. There were TV panels everywhere. Bumper parts everywhere. Kalen missed the corner again. Yeah, Mark Kalen was uh, trying to get out of the way, I feel like, and just, no matter where he went, he was in the way. But uh, this very tough, probably five laps or so for Mark Kalen right there. Let's watch it again here. That's Kalen back in that yellow machine. And yeah. got in the back of Colton Lane and checked it up a little bit. And then makes contact with Acosta, I think. Yeah, 
Very lucky that wasn't caution there. And then it got three wide again. Yeah, the 27 and others involved. The 37 and others involved right here. And that's your caution. There's just nowhere to go when you're three wide out of the corner out of turn two because if you end up having that, the drivers to the inside are, don't expect you to be there, obviously, because unless you're Ross Chastain, you're not up there. Well, in both ways, it, it, you also don't want to be deep on the inside of that corner because it feels like you can't get on the gas pedal without looping the car around. So really, both sides of that three wide uh, have very unfortunate problems there in that moment. Let's watch this. Let's see here. Watch this Abner Acosta very oh. last second. Man, oh, man. This is why you don't play pit games at this track sometimes. Yeah. Well, if you want real life comparison, if because he had that orange cone, technically in real life, he would have black flag. At this track, it's to the yellow cone, which is the barrier. Yeah, I got away with one there. I'm not sure if he was playing around with it or maybe this was indecisive and someone talked him out of it. I don't know, but that felt very, uh, very, very last second there. Coming up to like the last restart. Next time out, remember we talked about Texas. That's going to be the next track for these drivers as well for the third round of the season. That coverage starts at 9.30 p.m. for the Grand Nationals. Uh, there's the cone. So it is back away from the wall. He must have just barely got away with that. Because I looked in the system and yeah. I don't see any ruling, but... Well, JP, some people across racing, NASCAR racing, call Martinsville like the grandest stage of them all. I think it's time to see for Richard Regan if this track would prove to be an American dream, an American nightmare. See if he can secure another victory here. Point and overturn. Three and a half minutes on the clock. If it goes green about 12 laps, there's how close it was. There isn't a wall there, but that is the difference between... Pelony and no Pelony. So, Regan Jr. again in control. Bogue, Scruggs, Jeff Evans, your top four. Green flag is out, last restart underway. Bogue trying to get a chance for the win. He looks hard to the inside. Reese, Regan Jr. makes it stick. Bogue can't make it stick to the outside. Okay, and here's the dive. Hold on. Jose Bogues trying to make the crossover work. Didn't quite get there. But man, look at the dives to the back of there. Low and Dick and others trying to get around that group as fast as possible. Colton Lane's in there. Mark Kalen's back in there and others. Two and a half minutes to work with. Colton Lane still on some fresher tires. They're going to be too far back to have a chance of the win. But he's not far back enough to avoid contact. That's Epke along with Acosta making some bumps. Still green. Lap 117 underway, about two minutes to go. Regan Jr. and Reese Bogue, your contenders for the win. Right now, I guess it's all going to be a question, JP, at this point, unless something happens, of would Reese Bogue do it? Would he put the bumper to his team co-owner to win this race? I don't know. They're great friends. I, I don't know if he would do it out of respect or not do it out of respect, but uh, that's the only way I think Reese Bogus can be around here. Look, speaking of getting around, there's Mark Caitlin making a pass on the inside. For someone who's just involved in that last wreck, already back up here in P9. And McLaughlin the low and hard contact. Dominic begin, and he is upside down. We're under caution. This is the race. Well, that car is not supposed to be sitting like that. We're going to need to get a tow truck out there. Get him turned around. Dominic begins luck in this series. Does he even have luck at this point? Because I'm pretty certain he's found a way to get even worse contact than Cervantes. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah, that's unfortunate to see that happen. I'd love to see that. Here it is. Watch this here. Lots, lots of cars locked together and they sort of pulled each other around but yeah that's that's you're right that's unfortunate luck right there you saw james morgan spin through the back of it that'll stop him from being lucky dog 
Uh, it's not would not help his spot at all, but he'll still be nine laps down. He did not make contact. Just sort of slammed on the brakes to stop to avoid it, I think. Take a lesson. Uh, he and slot it in safe. Yeah, that's safe at home plate. That's the... Apparently, the quote of the night from the radio, Ted Lowendick. He's been begging for that all night. See the pun. Yeah. It, the gening, he phrased it apparently on the radio. Ted, part of the. Uh... The Joey Tab and Joe Peak school of uh, of bad puns. <laughs> Bottom lap on the racetrack. Richard Regan Jr. will end up a back to back winner like we've seen in the truck series. Your points later coming in. Exits with a bigger lead. One more exit to the corners just to get it done. Single file for race control. It's a 1-2-3 for RBM tonight. Richard Regan Jr. holds off Reese Bogue and Dustin Scruggs to get the team a banner night at Martinsville. Yeah, great job by those guys. Great job by all three of them for different reasons. I'm excited to talk to Dustin Scruggs. I'm excited to hear what goes into running this race on that one set of tires. Um, Great run tonight, a, a much cleaner race than the truck race. So great job by everybody. Race results are official in sim, but unofficial per race control. They're about to burn it down, but real quickly, let's take a look at the results. They're about to do a three car salute. Regan Jr., Boga, Scrubs, Jeff Evans, Lowenton, Knight, Holly, Zemke, Kalen, and Lane. Your top 10 here tonight. 11th spot went to Colt to Nick McLaughlin, Abner Acosta, Jim Westerfield on the next page. Dalton Geyer, Michael Lemieux, Nick Bayer, Doug Evans on the lead lap. Dominic begin upside down. Then James Morgan, Steve Loving, Thomas Sink, Danny Cervantes, Chris Dean. You're running order tonight. On track, it's burnout time. And here's the thing about the burnout time. If we can go to live action. Somebody forgot to tell that it's Richard Regan Jr.'s burnout. And RBM... Everybody else, including all of Whataback, saying this is our win, too, even though we didn't get the winner of the top three. Thomas Sink celebrating the race is over. And then here comes the welcome party. Hey, listen, surviving at Martinsville. Oh, man. Never mind. I was going to say surviving at Martinsville is worth a burnout, but uh, maybe not. There's still Reese Bogue moving around. Doing a nice little burnout there. Reese, you can't hit the wall if you're going to burn it out, buddy. That's not how burnout works. So the welcome party having some moments, still waiting for your top three finishers. Take a moment here, especially after all that contact that will take them to the virtual center. So your thoughts on the race? Uh, I think it's what we expected. Lots of contact, lots of, you know, beating and banging. Some, you know, incidents that maybe just people were surprising to some people. But overall, a very clean race compared to the first race. Right now, our first of those standing by is Reese Bogue. Reese, your first thought on the radio was, I didn't spin the tires tonight, although you did on one restart. How do you feel about the second? Oh, you know, not bad. Um, well, I guess technically that one restart, I kind of missed it, missed third for second. So it wasn't exactly spinning tires, but uh, same instance. But yeah, you know, happy uh, went all well tonight. And as I told Derek before the race, it's, uh, I'm more of a short track guy. I grew up racing short tracks. and. That's just me. So, get more of my comfort zone and comfort level here. And, uh, yeah, I was glad we had a uh, RBM 123 tonight. By the way, you're also telling all the drivers still in the race session your exact thoughts and mindsets here to the point where they just disabled your race chat in the sim. Apologies there, Reese. But talk us through trying to get yourself in the situation for the second spot. You tried the different strategies. Talk us through the night. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. My key behind. Um, yeah. So there's kind of a question about when to pit, I really, I guess. No, I don't even think Dustin pit, so there's that strategy too. But uh, me and Rich are just trying to, try to stay close together, try to stay, stay in the same strategy. And um, ended up working out, but I burned my reference up a little bit at the end there. Uh, even Rich said it. I mean, if my reference wasn't as smoked as it was, trying to get it around Dustin and all his restarts and everything, I uh, 
we would have had a good race down the back and for the last couple laps, but you know, just kind of get everything on the right track and having two solid weeks, it's good and strategy playing out correctly is uh, always a plus. So Reese, you told me you love short track racing, but I have a question for you. Yeah, what's that? Did you not hit a wall during the burnout? Do you not know that short track racers don't hit walls during burnouts? Well, that's not technically true, <laughs> but uh, I think I might have I might have touched it just a little bit. But they were piling right. in there anyway, so <laughs> yeah, they were. All right, well, great job tonight. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just want to. I know not in the car. But I just want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Maconi setups and uh, all the all the guys at RBM. is a good race, and uh, see you guys next week. Let's get that Reese Bogue with that real quickly. You have Pierre Premier on the car, so you're now McConey. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yep. I, uh, I guess as of today, just have that time to switch it over. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Speaking of which, Derek Watson's with the guy who does represent McConey, third place, Dustin Scruggs. Dustin, so many questions. So, so many questions for you. So, first off, the only driver in the race who never pitted for tires talk me through that strategy how do you make that work hey i mean once you make your bed you gotta lay in it so you know i decided to stay out with uh one of our teammates on the first caution or i guess second caution everybody uh went in and once i stayed out i knew there was no coming back from that so was there a point ever when you thought about it would there, would there have been any way like i guess ever, had everyone come down would you've gone with them obviously but or had you just committed to the, to the whole no tire thing yeah, I mean, I wasn't getting a lot of pressure. Of course, you know, I had Reese behind me that kind of helped protect a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, we were kind of pulling away from the pack. So, really, I didn't see any any reason to risk going to the back and, and getting caught up in that. Well, you did a great job tonight running up in front at some points and finishing P3. So, my last question for you here. Okay. We talked about it in the booth a little bit. So, Martinsville, of course, famous for the hot dogs. Uh, if you have a hot dog, what do you put on it? Man, you just got to go with a little bit of ketchup and some mayo. That's about it. Keep it simple. Ketchup know, and I, mayo. I know mayo is not a typical hot dog condiment, but, you know, a man likes his wiener like he likes his wiener, you know? All right. Well, listen, Dustin, <laughs> great job tonight, P3, and we'll see you next week at Texas. All right. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Good night. Dustin Scrove getting the third spot tonight. Your race win. Richard Regan Jr. got that tonight. Richard, you start from the pole. Get the job done. 77 laps led. How does it feel? Back-to-back -back wins and being a part of uh, the Mayhem Brigade for the burnout, which see, seen what about crash the party and crash hard into your burnout. Yeah, I mean, it feels good to go ahead and uh, get the victory two weeks in a row. Um, you know, at a back, they're just mad out, mad for some reason. I don't know, but uh, probably because Brad, but um I mean, he left the door open. He he tried a high arc, and I mean, I'm at his tire, so I mean, I can't stop him from coming across my nose when I'm on the curb. But I I don't think that was them being mad. That's a tradition they do every week, two of them. But in all seriousness, with the race, how was it trying to get back to the race lead on the strat difference? Yeah. Um, well, I knew passing was going to be hard tonight, and. Um, I knew some people were going to end up staying out, but um, I never. I, I every time we when i when we came out from that pit stop um i was stuck on the top and the first restart i got ran through um and then um stuck behind a couple slow cars and i just got shuffled back and had to be aggressive and um yeah it was definitely tough and it was fun racing uh reese and dustin on the top there and i'm glad that we got a one two three so texas next up the difficulty could be on though to get three for three your thoughts on the texas motor speedway yeah texas is also one of my uh favorite tracks we got a the schedule is pretty pretty good with the tracks that i like to run so um we're gonna go out there and try to do what we do every week um that we've been doing and keep carrying the momentum um it's nice that uh rbm is starting to gain some speed as a team as well and hopefully we can go up there and earn one three next week as well well from Derek Watson forwarded in. He wants to ask, what do you like on your hot dog? Just mustard. Why? Um, I'm very picky. I'm a very picky eater. Well, Richard, congratulations once again on the victory tonight. You get it done with a different look on the car. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, State Analyzer for coming on board for the remainder of uh, 2024. 
Um, Mission 22, Jay-Z Photography, Neonism Paints, you need to paint, go to facebook.com slash neonism, tell them the PRL sent you. Multiple Cirrhosis Society, um, everybody at Regenbogue Motorsports, putting in the time every week. Um, everybody at PRL and you guys at Race Spot. Once again, Richard Regan Jr. are coming away with a win tonight in RBM 123 here tonight. I'd like to thank them for taking the time to speak with us during post race coverage here on Race Spot. As mentioned to the drivers, Derek, we go to Texas next. A different flair from that Grand National race, but the flair will be on for things are bigger in Texas next week. Yeah, everything's bigger in Texas. The track, the speeds. The wrecks may be bigger, who knows, but I'm excited to get to a bigger track because it was wider. Where we can see three wide racing and not be scared of it. So JP, one week from now, you and me will be doing the Texas two-step. 8.30 p.m. is when coverage starts April the 10th. Be sure to buckle up and tune in. It should be a fun time from Texas. On that note, it's time to say goodbye. Our broadcast partner tonight, once again, Derek Watson for our producer and Dustin Olas. I'm Justin Prince saying so long. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening. You've been watching coverage of the PRL's Truck and Grand National Series from Martinsville Speedway here on Race Spot.